the uh, state's attorney. As all of you know, I ran for uh, county board president last year, and we missed that election by a hair. And to this day, it's been a year now, I still can't figure out how 39% of the suburban voters of the 50% that bothered to come out, 39% voted for Todd Stroger in suburban Cook County. I still don't know how that happened, but it happened. Beg your pardon? Yeah, well, I tried to warn them, but it you know, didn't work out. Uh, this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very important election. And I think that there's a lot of regret and remorse uh, left from the last election cycle now that the residents, voters, and taxpayers of Cook County have been able to see just what a disaster Todd Stroger is and his administration. I mean, here's a, a person who is who's trying to allegedly plug a $238 million alleged deficit with an $888 million uh, tax increase, the highest in the Cook County's 175-year history, and he says if he doesn't need all of it to trust him, he's going to give some of it back to us. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I don't trust him with a dollar, let alone $888 million. Uh, yesterday on the county board, I have to put this in before I get to the state's attorney uh, presentation. Yesterday was the best day as far as I'm concerned, being on the county board of commissioners for five years. We had seven tax proposals on the table in the finance committee. Five that Commissioner Maldonado put forth and two that uh, Commissioner Beavers put forth. You know, totally some, I don't know, $350 million if all of them were enacted. The five proposals that Commissioner Maldonado motioned for discussion on the floor failed for lack of a second. <laughs> and the two that Commissioner Beavers proposed, we had a roll call, two were in favor of these taxes, Beavers and Butler, and 14 were no, against, one absent. It was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful day. It saved the taxpayers a whole lot of money. The 2% sales tax that sales tax that remains in finance committee is not going to pass is not going to pass there's absolutely no will on this board to enact any taxes they know it we know it and we're going to make sure that this government is reduced to a reasonable size and doesn't tax the cook county residents and taxpayers out of existence here uh, for those of you who have not read the paper today we are entering a recession and uh, the mortgage market, as you know, is tanking, crashing. The real estate prices are stagnant or falling. Uh, people are losing their homes, their cars. The last thing that we need on top of a Blagojevich $8 billion gross receipt tax proposal and Mayor Daley's uh, $750, 000, a $750 million tax increase that he passed was a, you know $888 billion uh, tax increase at the county government level. It's not going to happen. Now, the state's attorney's office is a very important office. As all of you know, it's the second largest uh, law enforcement office in the country. It has a budget of $160 million, roughly, with grant money included, some 1,600 employees, 900 of whom are assistant state's attorneys. It not only prosecutes criminal criminals, but it also serves as a chief legal advisor to the county board president and to the constitutional officers in Cook County government like treasurer, assessor, recorder of deeds, and all the others. It defends the county taxpayers from workman's compensation claims, medical malpractice claims, uh, excess police force use, 1983 cases in federal and state court. It covers a whole spectrum of legal activity, very, very involved. It also enforces election laws in Cook County. I like to call it Crook County, uh, and also uh, deals with the, for example, failure to uh, abide by the Freedom of Information Request, the Open Meetings Act, all of those things that the state's attorney should be doing but is not currently. This office is being vacated by Dick Devine after 12 years. Before him, it was held by a Republican, Jack O'Malley, some of you may remember, who was there from 90 to 96. This is an office that should be held by a Republican in this county, where, have you, where we have a one system a one-party uh, system in place at the state, county, and city level. We're a national embarrassment as far as the corruption is concerned. County government alone probably loses about $200 million in the corruption tax. So we need a state's attorney who's going to be not part of the furniture, who's not going to be part of the combine, who's not going to be part of the 
you know, the regular democratic machine, whatever is left of it, but is indeed going to be someone who's going to be a reform-minded individual, fair individual, and who's going to enforce not only the laws against self-abusers who abuse with drugs and alcohol, self-abuse with drugs and alcohol for the 50th time, but is also going to go against some of the elected officials who are abusing all of us as taxpayers. I'm talking about white-collar crime. And I can give you plenty of examples, but I'm out of time. So I'll just put um, uh, you, you forgot you mentioned one thing. Uh, okay. Just one? Uh, yeah. We are, you said we want to do that we all are going to have an upcoming credit card. Yes. People are, I mean, people will not be in the bank, I'm already. That's right.